Hello all. Um, so my name is Marta Maguera. As they said, I came from Copenhagen. I work in uh, Milestone Systems. And uh, today I would like to talk a little bit about uh, how my team and I, uh, we automated the video and audio in our system. So the agenda is, yes. um, I will talk a little bit about our product, so you know what I'm actually talking about. Uh, then give you some arguments why we decided to automate both performance of the video and uh, the audio. Then I will tell you a little bit about the testing story, how we went from doing everything manually to have uh, test automation. And then explain a little bit about the tools that we used for automating both video and audio. So this is the product. It's called Smart Client, and it's one of the products that my company does, and it is used by, uh, for, by clients to see the feeds from different cameras. You can see them in the real life, and you can see them in playback and in other places. So this is the product that I'm going to talk about today, and I'm going to explain you how we do stuff. So why did we actually decide to automate the performance tests? Uh, first of all, uh, because when we were testing audio, there's uh, multiple video codecs that we had to test. Video codecs uh, are the, it's a way for encoding the stream so it, uh, it, it can be seen by, uh, by people. So we had to, and uh, we had to test on different codecs. On top of that, we had to test different resolutions. There is a huge difference between having a tiny video displayed and having a 4K video displayed. So we had to test also that, more, more, and more. So on top of that, we introduced hardware acceleration. First of all, we did it on Intel. Afterwards, we did it on NVIDIA. So all the tests that we already had, we had to do them those four times, all of them the same way, just different hardware acceleration. And it became more and more to test. And I'm the only tester in my team, so there was a lot of testing. Um, on top of that, there's a huge difference when it comes to the hardware. Different processors, different graphic cards, uh, they all have uh, influence on the performance. Uh, screen resolution, because uh, we showed the client the rendering surface has a huge uh, impact on the performance. The amount of screens that we actually hook up uh, to the machine also has an uh, impact on performance. So having so many different uh, configurations, it was impossible for us to test uh, during one sprint. So that was the reason why we decided to automate the performance test. Why did we decide to automate the audio? That was exactly the same reason. We have different audio codecs. We had to test different frequencies. And why did we choose those three frequencies? So, there is this uh, theory that if you have a sampling rate, then frequency is half of that sampling rate. So, in case of G711, the sampling rate is 8,000 hertz. So, the frequency is 4,000. So we knew if we have it one or three, we're definitely in the G711 range, but we, if we have something outside that range, it's definitely some other codec. So in case of AAC, the sampling rate is 44,000 hertz, so the uh, highest uh, frequency would be 22,000. 22,000 hertz is really hard to hear, we were testing it on ourselves. Some of my colleagues don't hear high frequencies. So uh, we had to choose a frequency that the we, in case of problems, we could steer here, but would be outside of the range of G711. So we had to test uh, on that. There's different audios, audio in and audio out. And I will explain you the difference between them later in the slides. And 
Audio in our product is visible in many places, not only live and playback, but also export, independent playback, and many, many more. So having any change made, it actually took uh, a lot of time to test through everything. So the testing story. How did we actually went from no automation to automating that? Let's start with uh, the video. So at the very beginning, when uh, we moved from ActiveX to DirectX, we exchanged all the video components in our products, so we had to retest everything. And people started coming to me and asking, so how's the performance? And I was like, hey, I guess it's good. <laughs> I was like, well, I guess it's good, doesn't really work, so we would like to have some graphs. I was like, okay. So I sat down in front of uh, my computer and I started uh, measuring in a way. I had the task manager and I was typing down the, the numbers and it took forever. And uh, when I finished, I was like, finally done. Gave them the, the graphs and they were like, oh, by the way, we changed one thing. Can you like redo it? And, uh, well, I was miserable. So uh, I started writing it down in a way I observed the counters for a moment and said, okay, this looks more or less 20%. But more or less, it's not really good number, right? So I was becoming more and more miserable and my team was becoming more miserable. We were sharing my pain. Uh, so the guys decided to help me out and to create a tool that uh, could at least gather those performance counters by itself. So we created this tool that was doing stuff and getting all the nice data into database and we're like, yes, we have tool. And then I had to run this nice query and uh, draw graphs in Excel. And because we had the tool, everybody was like, oh, now you have a tool, you can run it all the time. So I was creating more and more uh, graphs, and at some point it was driving me insane, Excel was driving me insane, and I couldn't keep up with the amount of uh, data they wanted. So I became again miserable, so sharing my pains. The guys decided to help me out again, and we created a website that could uh, take all the data from the database and uh, draw it nicely so others could, uh, could see it. And about the website, I will talk a little bit uh, later on. So this was how we went from uh, me writing down everything to having everything done by the tool. When it came to audio, in a way we had to test the audio was me speaking and me listening to me. The problem was when I was speaking, I had like a one second delay, so I could hear myself with a delay and believe me, it's super confusing when you hear yourself while you're talking so you can't really talk because you're just crazy. So uh, we created some, uh, some music that we could listen. But listening to the music, well, one person said, yeah, it sounds good. And I was like, yeah, I guess. It's, it's really hard to say if it's good or not. We could only like, uh, see if it's cracking or you don't have sound. It was like, yeah, something's wrong. So uh, we decided to start doing something uh, with audio too. Um, so let's go to the tools. What kind of a tools we actually used? Um, our test automation is using uh, Runorex uh, purely for the UI manipulation. We're moving mouse with the Runorex keywords. Uh, our, we have our own framework that is based on the end unit. And all our tests are done with uh, Jenkins and all our test results are also put there. The thing is, we're really highly dependent on the hardware. And uh, we have virtual environment and we can't run hardware acceleration on the virtual machine. So 
it's fine with the audio tests to run on the virtual machine, but we couldn't uh, actually run that for the hardware acceleration. So we created the separate tools uh, based on the framework we had, on the keywords that we have already written, and we made them so we can just take them, put them on the particular machine, and uh, just run it from there. Next. When uh, you test video, you have to plug in the camera. And it's uh, really nice, but for testing all those possibilities I said, the codecs for video and audio, uh, the problem was that uh, not all cameras actually support all codecs. So that would mean we would have to have uh, all the cameras, like a couple cameras, plugged in all the time, ready for us to, to test. And that doesn't really work out, especially it would be hard for us to say if a test broke because camera for some reason went offline or because, uh, because something is wrong with, uh, with the test. So one of my colleagues uh, decided to create uh, a fake driver which uh, stimulates a real-life driver, but we have a control over the video and audio. So having that, we knew what kind of a video we have. We knew the resolutions, we knew the gops, we knew the, uh, we knew the bit rates, and uh, it was us that created those videos, so we knew exactly that this video is correct. So in case something failed, it's most probably not because of the video. And the same was, uh, the same was with audio. Another thing is, it's really hard to compare two different videos. So we had to make sure that uh, all the videos that we have in all those codecs and resolutions are exactly the same videos. Because uh, it's, uh, the performance is highly dependent on the amount of uh, movement in the video. So, you know, it's nice to plot graphs with two different videos, but you can't really say it's the it's the it's this comparable thing so we created everything so we knew exactly what is in there so the video performance uh, too how does it actually work uh, we take the counters from the performance monitor some of the counters are already in there for the CPU usage. Some of them were created by us for uh, measuring the frames per second and things like that. So we just uh, run the performa uh, uh, performance and just uh, take the counters. The problem that we had is counters for the Intel. NVIDIA counters we can fetch from the NVIDIA card and there's no problem, but there is, we didn't find a way to fetch the data from Intel. It's not available. So in order to not waste too much time trying to invent a mountain, we started using this program that's called uh, GPU-Z. And uh, that program can gather those counters, save it into the file, and then we fetch that file and feed it to the database. If at any point we will be able to get the Intel mm, measurements uh, normally, like uh, with performance counters, then we will just skip the tool. So how does the video test work? So we have the smart client which has uh, views with many cameras. So those are all the videos that we've created. So we go from one view to another, and then we measure the performance. We wait for, uh, for it to stabilize, and then for three minutes we gather all the data, get the averages, and move on. So you can see the green one, those are the, the different views that we use. We can either run the whole test run with all the views, and right now it takes around 12 hours to run everything, which is a long time, so we usually let it run during the night, uh, because we can't use the machine uh, when it's running, so uh, yeah. 
we can also specify the codec, the resolution, the FPS, and hardware acceleration with the, the red one. So basically, we just go one by one and get all the data. The website. The, on the previous slide, you saw the website was much simpler. There was just graph, and that was it. After we created a simple version of the website, uh, we had to add much more data. Because uh, outside of the team, people started asking us, so how is performance? And all the POs and PMs and everybody was suddenly you know, very curious and marketing came in and yeah, copying those graphs and sending it to them. Ugh. So we created the link so we can send the link around. And it's like, there you go. This is measurements, have a link, have fun, look at it yourself, questions come to us. We also had to include uh, the information about the machine because we are highly dependent on hardware and software. So any changes for the updates, like meltdown spectra, all the patches, everything has impact on the performance. Additionally, my machine from Monday might not be the same on Tuesday because somebody needed that graphic card, yanked it out, put it somewhere, and didn't tell anyone. So uh, you never knew what's happening, and after some time, we actually lost count what's where. So we had to add all those information to be sure that uh, those tests are more or less comparable, and that's how we run it. Audio tests. Audio tests were another story. Audio tests were, uh, well, after the whole day of hearing me talk, I love hearing me talk, but you know, that's too much me talking. I, I just, I was driven crazy and uh, my colleagues were driven crazy. So uh, we started uh, doing this tool and uh, we, use, um, we use this uh, tool that's called the VB audio cable. VB audio virtual cable. And that tool works in a way that it uh, hooks up the speaker to the microphone. And uh, let me tell you how it works. So you, ha you have audio in. In audio in, you talk to the camera that goes through our system and then you hear it in the speaker. With the virtual cable, you talk to the camera, it goes through the system, you have it on the speaker, but the speaker is hooked up to the microphone and then we record this microphone and then we can analyze the file. And audio audio looks similar. You talk to microphone, it goes through the speaker, uh, through the system, and then you hear it on the camera. What we did uh, with audio out, we, instead of us talking because, you know, you can't do automated tests when you need the person talking to the microphone all the time, we had a special files with music that were put on the speaker and with the audio cable put to the microphone, went through the system and recorded and analyzed. So this is how, uh, this is how the virtual cable works. So, but how do you measure the quality of the sound? There's two programs, Audacity and Spec. In Audacity, you can see the audio wave uh, you can uh, see the codec, you can play it, but it's really hard to say, does this audio wave look okay or not? I was like, yeah, maybe. Uh, in the spec, you can see the spectrogram of, uh, of the sound and you can see the frequencies, but it's an image, but it might more or less give you some, uh, some clue. So what we used was, yeah, the audio doesn't work, sorry. So what we did, we created a tone which basically sounded like beep and it's very irritating and the very high frequency so your ears are bleeding if you by accident hear it in your headphones and this tone in uh, audacity you can see just straight line in spec you can also see it's just the frequency so we know the frequency and we know it's uh, it has to be a straight line but how we went through from the image to actually something that we can uh, analyze. We use this uh, N-Audio uh, open source library, 
We recorded those sounds, as I said, and used fast Fourier transform to get the data that we could analyze. So it worked in a way. We fed the, let's say, 6,000. And we expected that in the file that we got, we will get 6,000, 6,000, 6,000, 6,000, and so on. If by any chance in any place there was something else, like 6,000, 2,000, 6,000, 2,000, then we know something is wrong. Because what we fed was just constant sound of, uh, of 6,000. And this is the way that we're verifying the, the frequencies. We analyze those files and then we can immediately say if something is correct or not. So how we ended up? At the, at the end of the epic, we ended up with having more than 200 different tests of audio in our product, which usually, we usually don't test that detailed. Even during the release readiness test, we just check more or less it works. So right now, every sprint, we, every stand-up, we actually take a look at the the board, we can see the test uh, passed because we run them every after every build is done. And we can find immediately if we actually broke something or not. If, uh, if we didn't have those, we might have found them during the release readiness or, you know, on production. So uh, that actually really helped us because we managed to find a couple of, uh, of bugs that way. And it was a really, really good help for all of us. So that was everything that I wanted to tell you. And uh, do you guys have any questions? Uh, here, yeah, right, yes. Um, how can you test a microphone which is uh, not recording the sound but uh, vibration? The uh, thing the is, uh, the stable FPS driver, this fake driver, it, we have created the already some uh, music, some tones in Audacity. So we actually, instead of us talking to the microphone, we use those tones that are created that we fit to the microphone. So there's uh, no involvement of anyone speaking. Because that was also one of the issues when I was manually testing it. My microphone sucked. So it was really hard to say if what I hear is because we did something wrong in the product or because I spoke to the microphone wrong or, you know. Uh, yes, but can you feed this data to a throat microphone which detects vibration, not sound? It takes, uh, it takes the sound because uh, the, we don't... Th the thing is the, the way this uh, virtual cable works, it, uh, you don't hear the, the sound outside. It's everything in the in the computer. So you don't hear uh, that sound outside of the test. So there's no vibrations. OK. Did, did I answer it? Uh, almost. OK. I'll ask you later. Yeah. Uh, hi, first, thank you for the lecture. It was okay. interesting. But uh, I, as far as I could, I could understand, you mostly tested the amplitude and frequency domain of the audio. How did you te test the sample integrity? We, we do, uh, well, when we test the sample integrity, we know that uh, we record, like, let's say, 40 seconds of sound. And we know how much data we're supposed to get. And in, if there is no sound, like there's break, uh, we're able to detect the zeros. So at any point, if uh, we have some zeros in the file, we know that the sound is not complete, and that's a problem, and then we failed the, we failed the test. Okay, so did you, uh, do you automate actually the, 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 this process? Yes. Oh, cool, thanks. You're welcome. 
Any other questions? Yeah, I have one. Uh, so, uh, is there any accept, ac acceptable level in percentage of uh, digital dis distortion of uh, the sound? Uh, no, because uh, we well we know how big frequency it has to be. So if it is, if it's different than what we expect, we fail it. But at the very beginning of the recording, we might have a couple of seconds of silence because of a delay. Because you know you can't really have a video with a very big delay in audio, right? Thank you. Any other? No, then thank you.